everybody. Welcome to Primetime Sports Talk, the show where we give you our opinions about the facts, and we do this just one time only. I'm David Shealy along with Spencer Gabbard here. We're ready to talk some Georgia State basketball, man. You ready? Oh, I'm always ready. Always, man. We love basketball here at Georgia State. All right, here we go. Georgia State versus Ole Miss. Ole Miss went all the way to the NCAA tournament last year. SEC team, they beat BYU in the first four, but they lost to Xavier in the second round. And Xavier, you know, if you're a Georgia State fan, they beat us in the next round after that, after we came up with the big upset over Baylor. But this, this time, Georgia State met Ole Miss, and Georgia State had a chance there at the end. They, they yeah. had a chance, but uh, uh, Ole Miss pulled away. And uh, ultimately, 68 to 50, 59 win to drop Georgia State to two and one. Ole Miss came up with the victory. So, Spencer, I'm gonna go to you first, man. What stood out to you? What, what went wrong in this game? Well, several things went wrong, mm -hmm. but I first off, I just want to point out that if we had made all of our free throws, which we only made 55%, which is mm -hmm. terrible yeah. by any standard, but uh, if we had made all of our free throws, we would have tied the game. Mm -hmm. We lost by nine points, we missed nine free throws, yeah. and it was, it was just unbelievable. They were missing every other one. Yeah. It was uh, frustrating uh, to watch. Well, here's the thing. We made every free throw in the first half. Georgia State made yeah. all five of their free throws. And all the missed free throws came in the second half when it was crucial to make your free throws. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, was, it was unbearable to watch. It was like, what happened to the first half team? We were, Georgia State was down 35 to 32 at halftime. So Georgia State definitely had a chance. But yeah. free throws, man, that, come on. It's, it's fundamental. fundamental. It's yeah. fundamental. It's ridiculous, and not even that, but the, the rebounds as well. Yeah, they they literally had twice as many rebounds as us. Yeah, I mean, how does that? I just I really don't understand that with, with a team as good as Georgia State to be out rebounded yeah. by a team. I don't care if Ole Miss is SEC. I understand they're good, they're very good, but Georgia State's good as well, and they proved it in the first half. But second half, and I don't know what happened. Did they have milk and cookies at halftime? What? You know, what, what do you, how does that happen? Or it's like they were too worried about their fast break defense. So after every yeah. shot, they would just all get down to the other yeah. end of the floor just to be ready just in case. But just too so, many rebounds missed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, we're definitely going to uh, move on and talk about the guy who stood out for Ole Miss, Stephon Moody. This dude averaged 16.6 .6 points for them last year. And during this game between Ole Miss and Georgia State, he – had 21 points. Uh, he wasn't the leader. Jeremy Hollowell had 23 points overall, so he led all scorers. But Stephon Moody is the guy for Ole Miss. He steps up. He makes a lot of plays. I think he came away with how many steals did he have here? Uh, if we can find him on the stat sheet. He came away with two, uh, oh, three, three steals. He had three steals. And uh, one, one came at the end. He, he stole the ball, broke out of a double team, and then dunked it on us. So, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can't forget that one. Yeah, I mean that that guy is really good. So I, I give I give him credit for for you know playing well there, especially in the second half. But you know he's he's a good guy, and I, I just I don't like how Georgia State didn't do a good enough job of defending him. You would think with a guy like him, you'd put all the defensive pressure on him. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like they they planned from the start not to even mm -hmm. worry about him. Like they yeah. he was just too good for them, so they focused on other things. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's one thing I I understand when teams say well he's just one guy. Yeah. But it's different when that one guy is like a Stephon Moody or when you're playing or in the NBA, oh, it's, it's just LeBron James, you know? Yeah, like that still makes or breaks a game how yeah. well that guy does. Yeah, I mean, if that's their one guy, it's their one guy, you know? I mean, last year, um, R.J. Hunter was kind of that one guy. Yeah. And people didn't just, well, he's just another one of the five on the court. That's, that's not, I mean, not really true. We're talking about R.J. Hunter playing for the Celtics. He's going off, man. He's doing a good job in the, in the league right now. And, it, that's cool if you want to say he's just one guy, but Stephon Moody, man, if, if we put some pressure on him, Georgia State has a chance to win this game. Yeah, especially when looking at his stats, he had 21 points, 5 yeah. assists, 3 mm -hmm. steals, 5 rebounds. I mean, this guy did everything. Yeah, he did everything. And that's the that's thing. That's why they won the game. Yeah, he did everything for it. And it's, you have to know where he is on the court. You have to yeah. know where he is. And Especially they, when he plays 38 minutes. Yeah. He played the entire game. He played the whole game. And you didn't, for some reason, you lost where he was at times. And, and you don't know where he is. Like, I, don't, I really don't understand that. You have to be able to defend. You have to know who their one guy is and go after him. Force other guys to win the game for you. And that's what they failed to do. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, Georgia, Georgia State, you know, they got some things to work on. And I thought, of all things, offense would be the problem with this team, losing the top two scorers, R.J. Hunter and Ryan Harrow. Right. 
I didn't expect defense to be the problem. Yeah, I thought they had that down last season, too. Yeah. It seems like their system was pretty well put Yeah, together. you would think. Like, yeah. this team, and Ron Hunter's told us, he's like, this team's going to win games with defense. They're going to win. Well, the defense cost them the game. Yeah, isn't, I think the goal every game is to hold the team below 60 points. Yeah. And. Oh, no, they allowed 68. So. Yeah, that definitely didn't happen. Yeah, that did not happen at all. And, and this, this is the Ole Miss team that, that uh, lost to Seton Hall earlier in the year. Yeah. So that, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. to be fair though, I think uh, wasn't Moody supposed to be preseason first team All SEC? Yeah, he was, and you know he, he transferred in to Ole Miss too, and he just he kind of took over last year. And I get like he's a good player. Yeah, but I'm just saying for Georgia State to not know where that guy is on the court sometimes and lose where he yeah. is and to let him do everything that he did is. It's wrong. You yeah, know? and he's not new to the team either. No. He's been there for at least a year, so they, I mean, yeah. they have plenty of footage to watch. Oh, yeah, plenty there's of plenty of film. For. There's yeah. plenty of, uh, so much film. And, and the, I mean, Stefan Moody is a guy that we're going to hear about for the rest of the year. And yeah. then, and, and if for some reason, Georgia State and Ole Miss see each other again, because if, if, all, if Ole Miss had beat Xavier in the tournament, we would have played him. We would have played him in the end. So, I mean, it might happen this year. You never know. But if we ever see them again, we better not let Stefan Moody get lost on the court. No, no. This is the, the one time we should let that happen. Well, I mean, yeah. we shouldn't have let it happen should, at all. No. Last time it should happen. Right, right. So, but that's all negative stuff. Let's try to be positive yeah. here on Prime. I mean, we, we weren't blown out. We weren't blown out. We held in for most of the game. We, we did. And first half was good. And as we mentioned earlier, Jeremy Hollowell came away with uh, the 23 points tops for everybody that played. And Jeremy Hollowell is a guy that I did a show with Jared Oliver and he was saying how Jeremy Hollowell could make a run for a uh, Sunbelt Player of the Year. And I was saying, like, are you kidding me? You know, because he had one good performance. But I, I mean, he's, he's, this seems like he's going to be consistent all year. I mean, what, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on Jeremy Hollowell? I like him. He was looking really good in this game and he also yeah. looked really comfortable as if like he was a level above all the other players mm -hmm. on the court. I mean, I'm, I'm a little biased, but yeah. He was looking very good, and also uh, what was it, seven for fourteen. I mean, fifty percent field goals and sixty percent from behind the three-point arc. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a good he's a good. I, I didn't think he was going to be the like the guy on the team. I thought that was going to come down to like Isaiah Dennis or Kevin Ware or something like that. But and we'll get to Isaiah Dennis later because that's that's something that's really interesting. Yeah. With, with him uh, getting the keys to the Mercedes for Georgia State, but. Uh, Refocusing on Hollowell, I didn't think Hollowell was going to be the guy to like be that score, you know. So yeah. I, I'm surprised to see that, but I'm not upset by it. So yeah. I mean, all this does is, you know, once where Dennis comes around or whatever it is, then yeah, there's going to be a pretty complete team. Yeah, and also he was looking good off the dribble and off the pass. Didn't yeah. really matter what the situation was; like he usually had it under control. Somewhere. Yeah, for a guy his size, he can make his own shots. Yeah, and that that's really important. Yeah, and that's also unfortunately it's a little rare. For this yeah. team right now, we don't have too many players that are capable of that. Yeah, uh, we have a. Th this this is a team where if if you get to a point where they're the other team's in a zone, this team just kind of passes back and forth, and someone will just jack up a three. <laughs> yeah, whoever's the most open after 25 seconds. Yeah, and, and it's that's something they're gonna have to figure out. Which Coach Hunter says it's the chemistry. Some of these guys have never put on a Georgia State uniform before. A lot of these guys are new. They haven't played with each other. I get that, but. You got to start making some of these shots, and you got to figure out how to get around some of these zones. So yeah, and somebody has to step up. I mean, Hollowell can't do this on his own. Oh no, 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 absolutely not. But it's good to see him do something like this against an Ole Miss team. I mean, he yeah, is he is yeah. coming from a Big Ten school, coming from IU, and that's no joke because IU basketball, man. They, I mean, remember that year they were number one overall. Yeah, they've got a really yeah. solid program. Yeah, they've got a great program, man. So. I give Jeremy Hollowell credit, but we mentioned Isaiah Dennis earlier and how he had the keys in the Mercedes. But um, how many, what, what does that say here? What he played? Well, he played 30 minutes. played 30 minutes, but he didn't start. Yeah, which that's, that's unheard of. He had, I think, what was it? Yeah, the fourth most minutes yeah. out of the whole team, and he came off the bench. 30 minutes and didn't start, but he's got the keys to the team, and he, and he didn't start the, the game before this. And it, he started first game, but not not the second one. And yeah. it's like, well, he's got the keys of the team, but only like what? What's up with that? But and and you look at this man. He um he's not a good free throw shooter, by the way. He's on, he only made one out of his six free throws, and he he only made uh 
four, what does it say, four points for him in this game? Yeah, four total points. Um, oh, no, four yeah. field goals. Four Nine field points. goals. Yeah. Yeah, four field goals, not points. But uh, uh, at the same time, like, it's, it's like, dang, dude. We expected you to, like, be the guy. Coach Hunter pumped you up to be that guy, and you're not doing it. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually, I'm wondering if, um, because he's, like, he's a little bit of a stocky guy. He's mm-hmm. small, but he's... He's oh, got yeah, he's got some size time. on yeah. it. He's listed at 190 pounds. That's a lie. <laughs> that dude is at least yeah. 210. Like, come on Easily. now. Easily. Yeah. But I'm wondering if because of that, uh, Coach Hunter thought that maybe he would be a good defensive force against Moody mm-hmm. and pair them up, and that's why he played so much, even though it obviously didn't work out. Well, like yeah, that. no, it didn't work out. And if anything, I think for a guy like Moody, you got to do like a 2-3 zone or go with a 2-1-2 two, two, Yeah, something it's like got to be a team effort. Yeah, I mean, you can't just have – because Moody – here's the thing about Moody, he's fast. Or he's actually – I would say he's quick. He's quicker than he is fast. So he can move – his lateral movement is great. Yeah, and he's so small, too, his center of gravity yeah, is so Yeah, that's low. the thing. So Dennis can't really keep up with that. Dennis isn't bad, but Dennis, you know, Dennis Moody 101. Like, no, and like, give, give the guy some help. So that – but I'm just surprised to see, like, Isaiah Dennis is not starting, but he doesn't have – like, he has all these minutes over Isaiah Williams, who does start in his place. So it's kind of, it's a weird situation. Yeah. But I guess they're still trying to figure out who would be the best person to start. Yeah. I, I, well, they better figure out pretty soon. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, it, it's, only, it's only December. But, uh, the, you know, the season's going to keep going until, you know, March. But, I mean, eventually, you can't keep saying, well, we'll figure it out eventually. We'll figure it out eventually. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and then eventually, I mean, eventually, it's going to be January, and then eventually, it'll be February, and you're still saying, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Eventually. So, figure it out, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, man, we, I mean, I'm trying to be positive, but, I mean, I'm, this game wasn't, I'm, I'm not impressed. I mean, Jeremy Hollowell was pretty much the only thing there, man. Yeah, and it just seemed like they never had control of the pace of the game either. No, they no, they never did. You always want to set the tempo. Yeah, especially when you're on the road, and they just couldn't do it. Yeah, and they even um, they'd make they'd make a, they had a few little runs where they'd catch it by about five points yeah. or so, but they were never able to like close that gap completely. No, and no, I know it was just so frustrating to watch. Yeah, it was pretty hard to watch, but you did understand that this is an SEC school. True, true. That's Best opponent school. they've had yet yeah. this season. And the other thing is. At the end of the day, this is a measuring stick game, and Georgia State, first half at least, measured up pretty much half and half. Yeah. You know, they were even, but second half, it, you, you see the difference, I guess, in the, in the two programs. But I, I still expect a lot out of Georgia State, um, even though we are a little bit biased, but we, we do expect Georgia State to do very well. Yeah, you know? I mean, they, they could have won this game easily if they yeah. had just closed it out. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they scored... I think they scored in the last minute of the game. Yeah, they, they just stopped scoring at yeah. one point. Yeah. And uh, Ole Miss definitely didn't stop scoring. Oh, no. I no, mean, no. it was at the 218 mark, we were within two points of them. Yeah. So we, that's what I'm saying. Like, we had a chance. But yeah. like we said earlier, the free throws, the fundamental stuff. We got out rebounded. So out rebounded and not making free throws. Those are the two, like, most basketball things ever. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we fell so short in both those yeah, categories. Yeah. It, it just, I don't know. I really don't know what happened. So, uh, well, we, know, we do know what happened, but it's just like, why? You yeah, know, got to work on fundamentals, got to work on chemistry. Everybody's got to find their place on yeah, this team. Yeah. Still too many things to figure out. Yeah, so, so a lot to figure out, a lot to work on. But we, we always got to give somebody the game ball. You got to give somebody the game ball. So I'm going to let you go ahead and go first. Who's your game ball? Well, I'm going to give it to Dennis, even okay. though he, he had nine points in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. But I, I just feel like coming off the bench and stepping up like that and playing the majority of the game, like that does take a certain amount of mental fortitude. Yeah. So I'm going to give him the game ball just for that. Okay. He's sort of like, that's, I mean, that's outside of anybody's comfort zone, really. Come off yeah. the bench, but act as a starter. I mean, that's, yeah. that's odd. So I'm, I'm going to give it to him just because he was in a weird situation and he didn't completely fall apart. Okay. All right. I, I, I see why you do that. I, I see that. But I'm going to give mine to the obvious choice, Jeremy Hollowell. 23, 23 points, let everybody. He's going against an SEC school, did a good job. Yeah. He's coming from IU. He didn't even play last year. Let's, let's yeah, say he's that. Shirting. Yeah, he didn't even play last year, and he's, he's showing up, man. And I, I like what this guy can do. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say what Jared said with the whole Sunbelt Player of the Year, but I, I think he'll be a good addition. 
to this team. I think he'll he'll definitely have those games like he did against Ole Miss that he is the one guy. But the difference is Georgia State will win that game instead yeah. of not making free throws and losing. So um, I expect a lot of Jeremy Hollowell, and I, I can't wait to see what he can do. I mean, I'm from Indiana myself. So uh, he went to Lawrence Central High School, which is about, I don't know, about 30 minutes from where I went to high school. So, okay. yeah, so that, I mean, some, some more bias there. But at the same time, like, I'm, he's a good player, you know? Yeah, he's yeah a very and good he's player. comfortable leading this team as well, yeah. which and is very promising. Yeah, which is really promising. And I, I can't wait to see what he can do the rest of the season. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. So he gets my game ball, and Isaiah Dennis gets yours. But, and we'll, we'll see what happens with that Dennis situation with the whole, yeah, the yeah, whole not starting. And I'm, I'm wondering what the locker room vibe is like. Yeah, that's got to be interesting. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it can't, it can't be bad. Be. It's, it's just sort of like oddly tentative. Like nobody yeah. really knows what's going to happen in the yeah, game. Yeah, it's going to get more minutes, that kind of thing. Yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. But uh, we got to wrap it up here. I think okay. we had a pretty good show, man. I was yeah. Definitely. We know Georgia State's got some stuff to work on. And, but at the same time, positive, positive energy. Hopefully yeah, they, yeah. Can, they can fix and we, it. We saw a lot, of, a lot of promising things, too. So. Yeah. We did. I, I think. I think at the end of the at the end of the day, Georgia State is still going to be a good basketball program, and they're going to do very well in the Sun Belt Conference. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. So, uh, I look forward to it. I'm sure you look forward to it. Oh, I course. think everybody out there as a Georgia State basketball fan should look forward to some more Georgia State basketball. Keep tuning in to uh, Primetime Sports Talk. We've got a lot of episodes coming out today. We're covering all the games, including the UAB basketball game that, uh, that occurred last night. So stay tuned for all of that. Once again, I'm David Shealy. This is Spencer Gabbert. Have a nice one.